It's an honor to be back here at ProfCon, one of my favorite conferences for educators and professionals and students. And it's really great to see everyone uh, joining me um, for day two on a topic that I that I love talking about is near and dear to my heart. So um, let's let's get started. And so um, I have been uh, presenting at ProfCon now um, for the last couple of years. It's one of my favorite events. And I've had the opportunity to be able to talk a lot about personal branding, but as uh, Virgil mentioned, my topic is really about utilizing not only building your personal brand as an educator, but how do you format it um, to be um, able to build on a relationships. And so this is going to be actually an also an exclusive, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a case study that was pretty fun to kind of see play out based on building relationships on um, personal branding. So um, let's get started. So here's kind of the agenda that I have today. Again, I have, I'm an open book. And so as Virgil said, that we're, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of uh, the session today. So if there's anything that I can do to help, I, I definitely want this to be a jumping off point um, for all of us to be able to um, continue the conversation. So connecting me, with me on social media, email, I want to be able to help out in any way I can on personal branding. So I am going to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of do like a brief overview of what is personal branding, what does that mean for an educator, and then basically talk a little bit about some best practices in terms of building um, per your personal brand with relationships and maximizing your effort on that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about a case study that kind of illustrates how this, you know, what are some of the opportunities you can get by building relationships. And then just some words of wisdom, or my students call it uh, free burgisms. So, um, so yeah. So again, um, a little bit about me. Um, Virgil did a great job of introducing myself. So who is Karen? Trust me, and over the last couple of years, I've tried to tell people I really am a nice Karen. I'm Karen, but not a Karen, if that makes sense. But just a couple of things, you know, ways in which I kind of describe myself um, based on a personal brand. Um, I'm a professor, I'm an author and consultant. Um, I am a dog mom to a one and a half year old Australian Shepherd uh, named Mando. He is currently sleeping because it is um, really hot out here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, so he is definitely not a summer dog. He's more of a winter dog. Um, world traveler, coffee addict, gotta have coffee in the morning. And then I'm definitely a social media enthusiast. You might see a little star um, on another role. I am going to be um, adding on to my role at the University of Louisville on, on a very exciting project that really is something that is a culminating um, goal that I've had over the last couple of years in my career. So um, that actually is going to start in a few weeks. So stay tuned for more updates on that. So, um, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk a little bit about what exactly is a personal brand. And so I've been able to talk um, a lot about personal branding over the years at ProCon. This is a subject that um, is very popular uh, with my students. And I actually do have a courseware with StuKent on personal branding. So if you haven't checked it out, do so. But really, a personal brand is about like really a collection of perceptions and experiences, expertise, personality, and characteristics and perspectives that you have both online and offline. And that's a key difference, like that connection that you have and how you present yourself, showcase your expertise, your perspectives is really important, not only to do it online, but also um, in person. And so there is kind of an opportunity for you to make sure that everything is aligned. And I think what's very important for us as educators is, and for our students is to recognize that our digital and physical footprint is not just about what we've done in the past or what we're currently doing, but it really serves as a blueprint for a story. And personal branding evolves. It evolves over time. It evolves with our story. And it is something that grows with us. And we have to constantly um, invest in it each and every day. It is basically like a hobby or um, a sport. And as a former student athlete, um, I try to take that into account when I'm looking at how I can build my personal brand, but also foster and nurture those relationships to see what are some future opportunities that can come about through building them building those opportunities. Um, and so the importance of a personal brand, again, um, it's interesting. I've had various conversations with other professors, edu educators, students, professionals. There is, you know, perspectives in the industry where they're like, there's some people in one camp that says, oh, you've got to have a personal brand to work in this field, to be able to set yourself apart. Then there's others that basically say, you don't really need a personal brand in the industry. And for me, 
I think a personal brand is like sprinkles on a cupcake. You need to have the expertise and experience to be able to do your job. But if you're able to highlight and differentiate yourself from others by, you know, basically building a personal brand and, you know, kind of marketing that on and offline, you do stand out. So it is something that I believe is essential for anyone, you know, working in our field, but especially as an opportunity for us as educators to kind of move forward with it. And so a personal brand too, I think sometimes opens locked doors. And what I mean by that is there are some cases where we do see opportunities not available to everybody. And if you have a personal brand, there may be some opportunities that may have been closed to you that are now open because you've different, differentiated yourself so much with a personal brand and being able to showcase, hey, I have a value to offer. I am different. I have expertise. Here's my story. Here's my experiences. Here's what I can bring to the table for our community. And every personal brand is uniquely different, which is ultimately what you want to have. And, and so I know Donald and Scott talked a little bit yesterday about the, the emphasis of not being like everyone else. And so you want to kind of figure out what are the ways in which you can differentiate yourself? What makes you, you essentially? And I've talked a little bit about that over the years. And that's ultimately what you want to have. Like you don't necessarily want to be like everyone else. You want to highlight your unique experiences, stories, perspectives that really are packaged up that, you know, you're able to share with the world. And so your personal brand, I believe, is your most valuable possession. It is something that is very near and dear to our hearts that we are able to control, manage, and be able to package up um, for our audiences. So I think the biggest question here, we have a lot of academics, we have a lot of educators in the room, and we all have personal brands, you know, as an academic, as a researcher, as a teacher, as a professional. And these are just some elements that basically have been traditionally emphasized when we go for tenure, when we go to professions, research articles, invited talks, service, publications, books, evaluation. So all of these components look at our expertise, it looks at our perspectives, it looks at what we're able to bring to the table. But what is now expected, and this is just something that I think is very important to bring up just because uh, last year I went through the process of going up for full, um, to become a full professor. And there were some things that, I, that was kind of surprising to me that I realized going forward, um, you know, like there were some things that some of the external reviewers were noting saying, oh, well, Karen is known for this. Karen's personal brand is what she's doing. Yeah, research, teaching, whatever. But Harnessing, like they, there was one reviewer that said she was able to harness, it, you know, the relationships with industry and make those connections back to the community of academia. And I'm like, okay, that was not necessarily something that was emphasized a lot of my PhD program, but it kind of brings forward the, the expectations that we're seeing now for universities and academic programs where, yeah, we have to do everything that has been traditionally emphasized, but we have to look at publications, both on the academic and trade side, consulting projects, being able to have that industry level experience, invited talks, both on the professional and academic side, media interviews, brand partnerships, but I wanna highlight again here, building relationships, um, professional networks, industry connections, because all of that, if you're able to build those relationships outside of academia, they can help you in the classroom, whether they're guest talks, whether they're partnerships, class client project, relationships are so important for us to really utilize. And we can do this harnessing our personal brand. And so what I wanna go over now are just some best practices on how you can go about in doing that. Like how do you go about and say, okay, I, I have a personal brand, cool, awesome, Karen. What do I do with it? Like, how do I go about in building those relationships? So I think the biggest thing that we have to do is really understand what is your authentic brand. We hear a lot of times about the emphasis on, oh, you got to be authentic. You got to be transparent. But exactly what does that mean, right? You got to be true to who you are. And you need to really ask yourself, who are you really? Like, what are you really as a person, as a professor? What would be things that you would describe yourself to another person? Or how would people describe you to other people. So you want to highlight some characteristics, like what are the things that you want to communicate on behalf of your brand? Because that's going to influence how you're going to build those relationships, utilizing your personal brand. Think about what you can do. How can I help and add value? And a lot of times, you know, in, in 
the educator world, you know, we think, oh, yeah, we have our expertise, we have our knowledge, we're teaching the next generation. But there's a lot of things that, you know, the industry is interested in what we're doing. We're talking to the upcoming cohort. We are bouncing around ideas. We're currently learning everything that's happening in the industry. So there's a lot of value that we can bring to the table um, as an educator. But then personally, what are some things that you individually can basically bring to the table for me? I try to share my love for coffee. I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the things that I can add value to. But, you know, sharing resources, building connections, introducing to people. I love being like a corporate matchmaker to friends. I feel like, okay, you need to meet each other. So that's one thing that I feel like I can bring to the table. What are the rules in your life, right? And I tell this with my students because um, I am convinced that every single student of mine thinks that I live in my office. I have elbow patches on my jackets and, you know, I sit, sit around all day in my, my office. And that's clearly not me. A professor is just one part of my role. And so that's one of the things that I um, emphasize when I introduce myself to my students. I say, I am a professor, but here are all the other roles that I have in my life to make up who I am as a human being, you know? So you want to think about what are the roles that you have, because that all encompasses who we are in our personal brand. Understand how you are perceived, you know, how am I described to others, you know, being aware of like, what are some associations people have about yourself? understand the value that you offer that is a special. And so again, kind of tapping into what we've talked about earlier, what makes you, you essentially, what are things that you can offer that no one else can? So it's again, finding that gap, like what can you do as unique? So that might take a little time to think about, but it's once you figure out, ah, uh -huh, like the little light bulb goes off, you'll be really cool. And then also, I think what's important is being a listing, all the things that you are, but then also all the things you are not. So for me personally, um, we've all had professors in our graduate, undergraduate degrees, and I have a professor. I remember he was my accounting professor at the University of Florida. He is the person that I look to. I'm like, okay, this is the person who I do not want to be as a professor, like all of the characteristics. So it's important for us to know what are the characteristics you want to have to be part of your personal brand, but also say, okay, these are not values. These are my perspectives that I want to have to be associated with my personal brand. So it's important to know that balance ahead of time. Um, it's important for your personal brand to be visible. And so what I mean by that is, of course, with social media, um, if your brand is not out there, no one will find you, right? You know, so you have to kind of be your own media outlet. And this basically means having a presence where your audience is at. And so a lot of these components are, of course, online, you know, obviously, understanding, you know, what your, you know, the features are for each of the platforms. So we have the cover um, page across the channels, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, you have a tagline, you have a personalized bio, uh, personalized URL is really important for, um, of course, LinkedIn. Um, and then, of course, color palette, you know, a color palette is very important. And I've talked a little bit about that in the courseware with Stu Kent. Um, making sure that you have a color palette that re represents your personal brand that's consistent across the board. So even today, um, I was talking to Abigail and she was like, oh yeah, you, Karen, you, you know, look nice today. I'm like, well, thank you, Abigail. Yeah, that's, that made my day. But I said, you know, like I tried to kind of communicate, you know, uh, visually brand colors that are associated with UofL because that's where I work. And so you want to kind of think about how you visually and, you know, present yourself consistently, but also what are the information and points that you're writing out and sharing that base reflects your social media strategy. So a lot of these are kind of focused on um, presenting yourself social, you know, from an online perspective, but this is also something like if we were having ProfCon in person, which I heard yesterday that was going to be back in person next year, very exciting, very thrilled about that. So if we were able to have this conversation online, I would be exactly the same, you know. Um, so you want that online and offline connection to be um, linked and aligned together. So I think this is very important, <laughs> you know, when you're building relationships, leading with empathy and kindness. So basically to show the short of it, um, be kind, show empathy, and don't be a jerk, you know, because a lot, I mean, the world is, you know, a lot's going on, right? And I'm a big fan of Chadwick Lasso. I mean, I think it's important for us to be be curious, but not judgmental. And the world needs more professionals, educators, and people to take a step back, maybe, and just saying, okay, like, what are we promoting? Like, we we want to showcase our expertise, but we also want to listen to the community that we are reaching out to and kind of seeing what's going on, how people are feeling, what are they experiencing? Because again, we don't know what is going on in their own personal worlds. 
and we want to be empathetic. We want to take a moment to read the room, you know, like not every day we have to promote ourselves, but if there's a way for us to help others, to lead with kindness and empathy, the power of that will really resonate with certain people. And so I really want to think, you know, stress that because if you're able to do that over a course of period of time, really show, look, I want to connect with you. And I understand that, you know, that life happens, you know, what are we things we can do together to offer volume? Because your actions speak volumes to your personal brand. It's not only about your expertise, but what you do with it, you know, and people, re people remember how you made them feel, whether it's good or bad. And they're also with social media, they're for the world to see. And so by being consistent with listening and showing kindness, you're able to build trust and trust builds relationships. People feel that they are able to connect with you. You, you know, they understood, like if you led with kindness and led with empathy, they remember how that made them feel. And that kind of helps foster a strong relationship. So you never know what could happen due to a, certain, to a simple act of kindness. You really don't. And I think that's something that we, as educators, if we want to kind of instill that with our students, we have to lead by example. Because kindness does not cost anything. And I think that is something that we have to kind of think about as we move forward and how those characteristics kind of embody our personal brand. So with that being said, um, I wanted to kind of show some examples. And so these were just some examples that happened over the last couple of weeks. Um, so because again, you never know, like inviting people and, you know, being the, like bringing people part of a community, um, how that basically reflects back on your personal brand. And so um, I wanted to kind of share a couple of examples. So um, to give you guys a little bit of a background on this case. So Jess is actually one of the social media managers for the trade publication Ad Week. And she basically said, hey, like, I want to kind of give Karen a shout out and just say what made you guys connect with her what are some things that like you associate with her and so i was like well okay no pressure this is global on twitter but these were some of the responses and so like case in point jesse um he's called you know twitter dad or hire dad and so he's actually looking for a job but he expressed an interest in exploring teaching right and you know she, he tweeted something saying hey i'm looking to get a, you know to apply to be an instructor at a local community college and i thought i can add value to that because that's what we do you know so i said hey Anytime, if you want to chat, let's brainstorm what are ways in which we can help you move forward. And that made an impression on him. And we actually had a Zoom call where I gave him some tips. And so leading with kindness based on your expertise, again, you're able to say, wow, like this is really cool that this person was able to help me based on that. So that again, is kind of social proof, you know, of saying, hey, this person is reflective, like their actions reflect their personal brand. And Adam is a good friend of mine. He's a former um, social media influencer marketer, you know, from Chipotle and Coinbase. And um, I've been trying to get him out to Google uh, for the Kentucky Derby. So I've literally been trying to introduce him to everybody. So I love, as I said, I love being a marketing uh, matchmaker to connecting people together. So I'm like, okay, talk amongst yourselves. And um, I love seeing beautiful friendships emerge. It's wonderful. Christina was, you know, a great community manager at HubSpot. We were able to meet a few years ago at Inbound. And then Brianna um, is wonderful. I'm going to highlight her a little bit as someone who's really done a great job in harnessing her personal brand. And she was talking about how she was really hesitant about being on Twitter. But I said, look, we have a great community for social media professors. Come and join us. And then we were able, for years of corresponding online, we were actually able to meet in person. And so this is what she shared um, a few weeks ago in West Virginia. So you just, again, never know the impact that you have with just some kind words, generous actions based on your expertise, and it can come down. And so all of these individuals I have friendships with based on the relationships I've had. So again, when you're looking at being you know, an expert in personal brand, you wanna be a student, obviously. I mean, we're all in education, right? So we gotta be students for our own brand. And so you, you want to understand your personal brand and digital footprint and not everyone is going to do, you know, and build relationships the same way. So you want to figure out what works for you. Slide in those DMs or share something public and say, hey, I'd love to have a coffee talk. Or if there's sometimes, um, if you guys want to meet with me, you know to have a scheduled talk. I love coffee. Like I, I pretty much, you know, love having virtual coffee sessions. And so that is something for us that we can basically, you know, look at. And then don't be intimidated by others because there's a lot of people out there that say a good line, but yeah, you know, they, they're, they're not necessarily the real deal and haters are going to hate us. We, you know, quote the queen herself, Taylor Swift. 
and you just want to be able to be comfortable and grow your own presence. Um, ultimately, you want to learn um, from positive and negative experiences. And so basically building relationships is about ongoing um, efforts for you to grow as a person. Because there's been times when I've reached out to individuals. I'm like, wow, this would be amazing to connect with. Silence. But then if I've taken that initiative to reach out and say, look, I'd love to have a session to chat, meet up, whatever, the possibilities are endless. And so like just putting yourself out there, showing the initiative is so important. So, and I think too, um, luckily we don't have any weather, but I think if, you know, we did, I'd be kind of curious if the academic gods would kind of strike down lightning on me. Cause this, you know, this statement that I have here is some would probably get a few people like, what Karen, you're saying this. And it's true. Your personal brand extends beyond academia. I mean, it has to. We're seeing the writing on the walls for universities. We need to build our personal brand and relationships outside of academia to change inside academia. Um, we all have to be on the same page. We have to bridge that gap. And that's been something that I've really been stressing, not only with my work and research, teaching, consulting, but really br bridging the gap because we're all on the same page here. We want the best for our students. We want the future to move forward and we have to kind of change outwardly. So what I mean by that is we, as I said, kind of with the new expectations for personal branding and building those relationships, we have to kind of look outside saying, okay, besides going to conferences, our network, um, some of our academic conferences, where else can we go to extend those partnerships? Industry partnerships, uh, media interviews, exclusive experiences, contributor pieces. I'm a big believer of professors being able to write, not just only for research, but also being a contributor to trade publications to kind of, again, connect that bridge. So I've had a chance over the last couple of years to be part of Adweek, Academic Council, and then I've recently been named a contributor for PR Daily because that's part of my field. But um, there's also collaborations. I mean, this is a uh, picture from a few years ago at Cam Lions Festival of Creativity where we have an educator summit to, again, bridge the gap, build relationships. And I'm actually gonna be heading there in a couple of days. And so it's about looking at some of these partnerships to extend your personal brand with those relationships because then potentially you can bring those relationships back into the classroom. And that's really gonna be something that's really exciting for all of us to kind of move forward here. So I think it's important for us to um, be engaged with the community. So if you're thinking, okay, Karen, I wanna build relationships. How do I go about doing that? Um, building relationships does not happen overnight. I just realize it's kind of more of a marathon versus a sprint. Um, and if you want to participate, connections will come. And there's a lot of great places on social and in person. You can go to conferences. You could be here. What we're doing here in ProfCon, we're building those relationships. You're extending your knowledge, you're extending your personal brand, but you're able to participate in Twitter spaces, showcase your expertise on podcasts, a comment, reach out. Like I think Donald mentioned some great points yesterday. It's like, hey, Comment on a LinkedIn post, reach out, showcase your expertise. But, but the initial thing that I guess to summarize all of these specific tactics is to show initiative. If you just wait saying, you know what, I'm going to wait for someone to kind of slide in my, D like my DMs and, you know, magic will happen. That might necessarily happen, right? But if you're able to engage yourself and put yourself out there and then, yeah, I mean, reach out to send a DM, you know, slide in those DMs. And just kind of build a relationship over a period of time, month, day, week, et cetera. So I wanted to highlight and give some shout outs to two people that I think really do a good job of kind of fostering a community and building relationships as part of their personal brand. So as I mentioned with uh, Brianne Fleming, she's a prof marketing professor, branding professor at Florida. She's also a marketing consultant. She has a podcast called Making the Brand, but she hosts a Twitter uh, community and um, chat on Fridays called Pop Chat. She's really into pop culture and uh, marketing. If you tell her that NSYNC is the best band, she probably will not talk to you. She's a big Backstreet, Backstreet Boys fan, so I teased her about this in Morgantown. But um, Caroline also has created a community on, on Facebook for digital marketing professors. And so if you're looking for other digital marketing professors to connect with, there's this group, there's an advertising professors group, there's SM Profs. So there's places in which you can correspond and engage with. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Um, so so now I get to go and talk about my case study. So this is going to be an exclusive for a can because um, when I talked to them a little bit about relationships and personal branding, they said, Karen, you've got to talk about this. And I'm like, okay. So I have a case study. Perfect example 
of when relationships kind of build over time, magic can happen. And you might be, you might have seen this, or for those of you who have it, you might be like, okay, what is going on? Who is RR? So anyway, so I'm going to give an exclusive here for Stuka about how this all came about. But before I do, I do have a video. Hopefully this will play. Um, if not, then I'll do the summary. So I have like a 30 second. Um, she had actually another um, component of the class. So just as before I play this anymore, so to give you guys a pretext, so I teach a graduate level social media influencer marketing class and my students were doing workshops and one of the students was doing an influencer workshop, just basically kind of like what we're doing here with StuKit, walking students through the process of basically doing influencer marketing uh, for a campaign and she was highlighting certain influencers. So um, this was something that I did and then basically brought in an influencer. So. I'll let you guys see the movie. It's activity. So uh, what better way, I think, to allow us to talk about influencers than to actually bring an influencer to class. So, so let's see. Well, hi there. Professor Reynolds, welcome at the University of Louisville. I finally made it to college. You Thank did. You Thank you. Very nice to be here with you. So yes, I did have Mr. Ryan Reynolds come into class. Um, it was a moment, as you saw with the students, they were completely surprised, but- um, oh, She had actually, let's see if I can. Okay, so prop con pop quiz. So yes, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be amazing. Um, so Ryan Reynolds came to my class because of the following reasons. And so keep in mind, like these are actually reasons <laughs> that people came to me as like, this is why. So here's a question for you all to kind of, you know, you know, wake up and say, okay, I'm gonna take a pop quiz. So why did Ryan come to my class? So the first answer is I paid Ryan Reynolds speaking fee starting at $250,000. Um, this was actually his evil brother, Gordon, who came to my class, who Gordon is featured in some of his commercials. Um, Deadpool, if you've seen uh, the latest Doctor Strange movie, you'll get this reference. Deadpool messed with Doctor Strange, and this is actually RR from Earth 616. Uh, he lost a bet for Hugh, to Hugh Jackman, or E. Um, he offered to come and speak to my class via Twitter DM. So I'll let you guys take a moment to see which ones um, you think. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, oh yeah, you guys are acing this, you know, quiz. He did. He came to speak to my, like he offered to come and speak to my class. So give you guys a pretext. Um, I've been core, like basically uh, Ryan started following me on Twitter in um, December, 2019. It was a moment. It was, I acted completely calm and collected. No, I, you know, was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But over the years we had this ongoing conversation. I was talking about his work and I was able to meet some of his team members. You know, we were able to kind of share some ideas and, I mean, again, what he's doing, you know, with maximum effort, aviation gin, mid mobile, I mean, it's just iconic. So again, you just never know like what is going to be on your bingo card for the year. And I did not have in 2021 last year that D Ryan Reynolds was sliding into my DMs. And so uh, he sent me a DM last summer and basically said, hey, you know what? Like, I'd love to come to speak to your class one time. For me, Q, like second freak out. I was like, oh my gosh. But he had some stipulations. He had um, some things he wanted to talk to students. He wanted it to be just with them. He didn't want it necessarily to be fully recorded. Um, but he also, he said, I want to Zoom bomb them. He's like, I want to do that. I'm like, okay, no problem. So I had to keep this secret until March. <laughs> so that was really, really hard, but it was a lot of fun. But he spoke to my class for 45 minutes. And so he shared insights about all topics. Um, shared some best practices. It was really, he was building those relationships and really created a unique experience. Um, he did call me a nice Karen. So I think that validates everything that I've, I've experienced over the years with the, again, talk about personal branding crisis, being named Karen and interesting your name, not necessarily be associated with the best things. Um, again, a moment. But, but this entire experience did not happen overnight. And again, it all came because of building that relationship through social media, personal brand about adding value. So again, being a professor, you know, what are some values that you can bring to the table to someone like Ryan Reynolds? Showcasing his work in class, giving him a shout out, you know, online saying, look, this is amazing. 
And by building those relationships and adding value, he was like, you know what? I'm going to go and sleep in this class. It also, you know, we did mention that we have the same brand colors as, you know, and I have my Adobe, you know, Deadpool cup. So I'm like, hey, we're, we're like besties right now. So that's something to think about. Um, but like what happened, what happens next? And so uh, my personal brand now from my students is basically, I am the professor that had our R in class. Like that's been something since March. Um, we did get a lot of attention locally, nationally, internationally. It was a whole new view of, my, of me, both on the student side of the industry, as well as the university. The university was like, okay, Karen, like you're, you know. So that is something too, by having this relationship and having this opportunity, is amazing, but like, I am very grateful to Ryan. Like I not only was a fan of his work as a businessman, as an actor, but I also felt like I gained a new friend in him by having these conversations. And so, and I wanted to bring up um, the whole nickname thing. He actually asked me through a, um, a you know, through Twitter DM, like how, how would you like to be called, you know, basically. And I said, what, and he was like, Dr. Dr. Freeberg, Professor Freeberg, and he kind of threw out some names and then he said, Dr. K. And I'm like, no one calls me that. That's pretty cool. So he referred to me throughout the class as Dr. K. So I'm like now telling my students, hey, Dr. K is reserved only for Ryan Reynolds. And then, you know, my students keep myself on my toes. They were like freaking out. Like, I mean, if you want any way to motivate students to turn on their cameras in a Zoom call, just tell them, hey, you never know who's going to stop by in class. And I'll tell you what, the rush of the semester, I, I always had a few students that had their cameras off, but yeah, every time they were like, okay, you just never know who's going to come in. But the following week, they were asking if The Rock was going to come in. And I'm like, kids, funny. But um, yeah, Ryan was truly amazing. He, again, one of the best. He really understands the relationships and um, by being kind to talk to the students about um, everything from social media. It was really a special event. Am I ever going to top this? Probably not, but that is okay. But again, it kind of shows the power of utilizing relationships to build value and good and, you know, really create a very fun and unique experience. Um, words of wisdom. So I know I'm kind of running out of time. I want to make sure that I um, go over these a um, little bit. Uh, no, otherwise known as uh, Freebergism. So I would say the big thing is own your own narrative. You want to be your best advocate and you don't want anyone else to tell you how to tell your story. And a lot of times you see this related to um, like other people outside of academia to say, oh, educators, you know, are not keeping up with the trends or educators are not this, whatever. Don't let anyone else like control the narrative of what you're doing and who you are as an educator or as a personal brand, like be your best advocate. And so that's been something that I've really been passionate about over the years is being there to really harness that because, you know, with everything that you guys are soon doing with StuCan or your classes, your projects, you are doing everything that's necessary to, in, you know, improve and prepare the future generation of students who are coming into the work. Um, show me your impact. Don't talk about it. You know, I think that's the biggest thing, like show the impact you're doing. You can say, I'm doing these projects, but like show them like, you know, Scott has done a really good job in really utilizing his digital marketing students to kind of say, look, like, here's the LinkedIn, you know, stats that, you know, and skills that you need to have. And, oh my gosh, you're getting jobs all over the place. We're winning awards at national, international competitions. That's impact. What Scott is doing is really good. Um, there, and understand there's some relationships that are just a season, just a lifetime. I understand the importance and difference of each. So some relationships you come and go and some people, you know, have different journeys. Perfectly fine. So you want to be able to kind of determine what um, type of relationships you are embarking on. Uh, treat everyone like human beings. I mean, this is common sense, but I mean, your actions speak louder than words. So be kind, take a page out of Ted Lasso, be curious, not judgmental, and understand your value. We all have value in terms of what we're able to share with the world, with our expertise and our insights. And so it's an opportunity for us to network in and out of the industry. So that's something that would be important. And so for us, I, just to kind of conclude, and I'm going to open up for Q&A, you know, to, for your personal brand to have the greatest impact, you have to put forth the maximum effort. You know, if there are certain goals in mind saying, oh, I mean, if you have grand goals saying, you know what, I would love to have someone like Ryan Reynolds come to our class, build those relationships, but understand it's not going to happen overnight. It takes a little time to build those relationships and that trust. And so you want to kind of figure out building up your personal brand, kind of showcase what you're able to offer and what value do you bring to the table. 
that's different from others? And then how do you build those relationships? And not all relationships are going to flourish, but there might be some that you're like, wow, that is so cool. Investing in your craft, expertise, and community each and every day is super, super important. And what you want to do is be able to grow and build long-lasting relationships that can pave the way more than you could ever imagine. And so this case with Ryan was not some, again, not something that happened overnight, but it's been extremely rewarding, not just with my students. I mean, a lot of them have gone out and said, well, yeah, when Ryan came to our clubs, like what? Like those stories, those experiences harness your overall understanding of what's going on. So that's another element that kind of separates you from the rest of the crowd. And then again, show initiatives. Others are waiting to connect with you. And I can't stress this enough for educators. People want to meet us. People want to help us in the classroom. They want to talk to students. They want to collaborate. They want to get more. And so it's about showing the initiative. We can't just wait for people, you know, to kind of say, well, I have this CV that's posted on my like academic website, you know, for the university. And people are obviously going to contact me. You got to go out and reach for those opportunities and resources and reach out and say, hey, I'd love to contribute for this publication for, you know, that, that's in my industry or, you know what, I'd love to be on a guest on this podcast. Here's what I have to offer. So you have to be your best spokesperson and show that initiative. And ultimately, with all of these in place, now you can go and, you know, get yourself your own experts team together because we're all in the same page or you want to have a group of people that you can share your ideas, sh share your goals share those things that you feel would be best beneficial for your personal brand, um, brand and showcase those relationships with others and essentially build your x force team like Ryan did. So hopefully not ending up all, like all the players, you know, or characters in x force but, you know, ones that will help and support and nurture you. So um, again, I, I wanted to make sure that this was an opportunity for you guys to connect with me. So I have my email address up here. It, it's just karen.freeberg.google.edu. I'm Kay Freeberg pretty much everywhere on social, and I'd love to continue the conversation and open up to any questions that you guys have for the moment. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen and I'll take it up, um, let Virgil and Abigail take it away. Yes, yes, we had a lot of great uh, questions come in, a lot of great engagement. Um, people were, were super excited to, to see that and see what you've done um, with your brand and especially, you know, that bring on uh, um, just forgot Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, first question: How many uh, platforms do you recommend starting with for a personal brand? Yeah, no, I mean I think that's a great question. Um, I mean back in the day when I first started online, I just had my website, and then I was actually a late adopter to social media thanks to my parents. Um, I started on Facebook initially back in 2008, so again I was really late, and then added Twitter. So. I would say that what you want to do is first off, see how many platforms you can manage with the time that you have, but also look at the platforms you feel are best suited for the people that you want to connect with. So for me, I'm pretty much everywhere just because I teach, consult, and research in social media, but I don't spend as much time on certain ones. Like I pretty much live on Twitter. Twitter is great. I've been doing more on LinkedIn and um, Instagram and even TikTok, which shocks my students. And I'm like, hey, you know, millennial elder here. And also I want to make sure that I'm current. Um, but I would say, you know, for you just picking a few to start off with, maybe two or three, really kind of build those communities up, but then look also where you want to go to build those relationships. Excellent. Uh, in general, how do you feel professors are doing with personal branding? And as a follow-up, do you think it's on the individual professor to do this or should universities provide training for their professors? Yeah, no, I think there are some professors that are absolutely rocking in personal branding. So um, as I mentioned, Brian Fleming does a really good job. I would also say Karen Sutherland down at uh, University of the Sunshine Coast down in Australia. I mean, she is doing everything. She's a practitioner, researcher, teacher, consultant, uh, yoga teacher. I mean, I, I was able to learn from her a few years ago when I was down there for my sabbatical and she is doing exceptionally well. So I think that professors overall are doing exceptionally well. I think there's a gr growing movement, you know, with professors realizing, oh, I need to do this. And there's some that are kind of spearheading the way. Um, but in terms of training for professors, we are actually seeing more and more of that. Like uh, there's been several sessions that I've seen even at U of L um, where I'm at and at other schools saying, okay, how do you harness your personal brand as an academic? How do you publish or promote your research and teaching? 
on social media. So there's more resources there. Um, but I do think um, there are some universities that do help in that regard. But if you're in a university that may not necessarily have those resources, it may fall down on the professor. But there's tons of resources, including this groundbreaking book, you know, from Stu Ken on, you know, personal brain and a simulation. So if you're offering that to your students, then you could also, like, I feel the best way of learning about personal brain is doing it with the students. And so you're able to kind of show them like, oh, okay, this is how I would answer this question based on my personal brand. What about you? So it can be a really con good connecting experience. Yeah, so if you want to uh, build up your personal brand, you know, adopt this personal branding course for simulation for your course and your students, and you'll learn it. Um, an another question, what is the best advice you can give to a college student that will help them identify what makes them unique and desirable to prospective employers that they can, you know, highlight in their brands? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I get this question a lot and I, I actually have it kind of as a twofold. So first off, I have the student, like I would ask the student kind of do like an audit, like kind of really kind of look at, okay, what are they posting? How are they presenting themselves? And actually have them do almost like a competitive analysis, looking at other students that are kind of in that same market of like, if they wanted to go into digital marketing, it's like, okay, these are two students. What are they doing that's really working for them? Or, and then that could also help them identify what are things that they're uniquely skilled at but then I also I mean I do this all the time myself is I have a group of people like I kind of do an informal like interview and focus group and ask them okay how like what are some things that you associate with me what are like some perceptions and so by doing your own research and asking people too like you're able to get kind of a collective list of perspective um, attributes perspectives associations and then you have to say okay is this kind of the associations I want to basically be associated with with my personal brand and then what, and then figure out, okay, what are strategies to either continue on this path or what are some things that you would wanna change? Personal branding is evolving, you know, and it's about kind of looking at the, taking the initiative to kind of show your others, your story um, and being able to be your best advocate and kind of um, evolve with the changes. Awesome, and this is kind of a follow-up to that. And maybe, maybe you answered it in that already, but what advice do you have for college students to break into networking? Network, well, First off, like, I mean, I would say for online, um, definitely look at the various communities. There's some communities, as I mentioned, that focus primarily on marketing um, and PR. So um, what they would want to do is kind of search out for those communities to kind of start kind of putting yourself out there. And it doesn't have to be like you have to go a thousand percent in. Do a little bit every day, you know, just maybe say, hey, I'm here. I'm a student. I'm saying this, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'd love to connect with people. Just kind of sharing that. Um, there will be people that will be able to chime in and say, wow, that's great. Welcome to the community. And then you can kind of build value. You know, and I, I'm a big believer about being generous with the information and value that you're able to bring because people are like, oh, wow, like this student is really providing some great insights. I want to connect with them more. So you're able to kind of snowball that relationship in effect. But offline, um, as things are open up right now, going to those professional networking sessions, joining clubs um reaching out like and looking at local um agencies or brands that are doing some really cool things and just sending them a LinkedIn message there's one brand that I was like oh I have to kind of you know know the ins and outs of this campaign so I sent them a DM on LinkedIn and I share that with my students and so sometimes I have to kind of use myself as the guinea pig if students are shy and stuff about networking like I don't know about this Dr. Weaver and I'm like okay I'm in the guinea pig I'm going to do this myself and so if they see that they're like oh, okay I can do that too so that would be something that I would do is just kind of putting yourself there, both outline, online and offline. Awesome. Thank you. Um, another question. How do you manage the many opportunities that come to you as a result of personal branding? Uh, so as individuals said, they purposely keep their outreach and participation mostly at the local level because they have so much on their plate already. They don't have time to you know, fill all these other uh, things coming in. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would say... <laughs> It's um, like some of these opportunities can be like, wow, overwhelming. And I, I do have to be completely honest, you know, with some of these folks, like there's some opportunities, like I feel like there's times when you have these opportunities all coming up the same exact time and you have to kind of choose like which ones you're going to go for. And there's been times where I've been able to work around, like, like with COVID, there are two conferences that were happening at the same time virtually where I'm like, okay, I can do that. I can't do that right now. And so what you have to do is you want to be transparent, like in terms of the opportunity to say, look, you know, we have a lot on our plate. I'm going to be doing something, you know, this semester or at this time, but you don't, you want to keep the door open for the future and just say, look, I'm interested. I want to pursue this, you know, eventually maybe down the line, can we have like a check-in maybe 
in a few weeks when things kind of are able to, you know, kind of um, calm down in terms of the busyness, whether it's like finals or you're working on several projects so far. So it's about kind of managing your time because you ultimately you don't want to get burned out like, oh, I'm going to accept everything. And because if you're accepting everything, that means people are like, okay, you really are doing a lot. But what I try to do is kind of be strategic and kind of say, okay, how will this help me down the line? How, what are some future opportunities that can line over here? So it's about kind of managing your time and energy, obviously. Um, Cause I mean, for me, there's, all, I drink a lot of coffee but there's only so much coffee I can drink um, per day. So you just want to kind of be, you know, understanding of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then the last question we'll have here, um, this individual asks, if, if one is active only on one social media platform, can personal branding still be done effectively? Or do you recommend setting up being active on multiple social media platforms? Yeah, I mean, I think that if you're active on one and that is where you want to be and that's where your audience is, absolutely. Um, and that's where I would say that the, if I had to like only have one platform that I use primarily for the rest of my life, I'd probably choose Twitter just because it has helped me out so much professionally and personally for the relationship. Like um, I follow, like for example, with Ryan, like I'm following him on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram, but like it's Twitter that was the one that basically I was able to interact with him and have the most value. But I do think, you know, when you're on every other platform, you don't necessarily have to be there hundred percent of the time. But you want to be there, one, to, you know, basically reserve your handle so it's consistent with everything else, like with the primary, um, like, platform you're on. But also, two, you want to keep the door open in case you decide, you know what, I want to venture out. I want to do more on this platform because this is kind of the trends that we're seeing in the community and the marketing field, et cetera. So um, that is something that you just always want to, like, I wouldn't close the door just say, okay, I'm only going to do one. But you want to kind of, you know, test out because again, a community might arise, a person might connect with you on a platform that would have never been possible if you weren't there. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. Um, and Abby asked in the chat what uh, she's curious what everyone's top uh, social platform is, if it's Twitter or if it's something else. So um, see some things coming in there, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, in that order from Garrett. Um, mm -hmm. Might be uh, uh, probably YouTube and LinkedIn. Um, but uh, TikTok also, like you said, you're, you're, on TikTok now. That's a, that's a new one for everybody. Um, yeah. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Karen, for um, coming and teaching us about personal branding. Um, I think it's been a, a great session, but a lot of great uh, feedback from, from the chat and from the audience. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really um, want to thank you all at Stukin for, you know, hosting and giving us such a platform and conference to be able to build relationships and share knowledge. And so PropCon is one of my favorite events. So thank you again for allowing me to share um, my story and insights.